Hi, it's Trisha Fulton here from Author Heroes, and in this short video, I want to talk to you about the pre production phase of publishing your book. Now, I'm just taking you behind the scenes here to where the course is online for Fast Track Author, and I'm just going to walk you through the different steps. Pre production occurs after you've written your book, you've had it edited, and now you're ready to get it the format completed and the layout done. When you're doing pre-production, it's really important to do things in a certain order in order for your book to be published correctly. There'll be a test run and then you'll be, once you receive the final copy and you're very happy with how it looks on the inside and outside, then you'll go to full production. Now, using Amazon, you can do print on demand, which means you don't actually need to purchase a large volume of books or invest a huge amount of capital. It means that you simply need to complete your book, have it ready in the format and style that they want it to be in, upload it to Amazon KDP Kindle, and then they will ship it to a customer on order. So it's print on demand. A customer places an order, Amazon prints it for you, they ship it directly to the customer and the transaction is all complete. So let's quickly run through this. As I mentioned before, when you purchase the Fast Track Author course, you'll get access to everything on the inside. I'm just doing a quick summary and showing you what's included. So we talk about finalizing your manuscript ready for pre-production, and that means having your storyline complete, having the editing, the proofreading, making sure all the sentences and paragraphs make sense, make sure all the spelling is corrected, the layout is all done. So there's a number of steps there. So let's recap that. That's editing includes copyright editing, changing words, changing spelling, correcting sentences, structure, making sure it reads well. You have the proofreading and you can do the initial first proofreading pass yourself by reading it out loud to yourself or reading it to someone else. You pick up most mistakes by doing it that way, but you should definitely get someone to help you with the final copy. So editing, proofreading, concept, and then once you've got that completed, then you move to formatting, which is also called typesetting in the publishing world. And that's taking the book content that you have and putting it into a format that's acceptable for the publisher. In this case, it's Amazon. And there's two types of formats. There's a format that's used for Kindle, which is a book that's read on a digital device, could be an iPhone, a Kindle reader, could be a computer, any type of smart device. Um, and the second layout is a print version, and that's a different size page, that's a different margin, different layout. There's a, there are some differences, but you don't move to this stage until you have finished all your editing and pre-production checks. So let's run through this, finalize your manuscript ready for pre-production, um, transfer all your notes. So in the course, um, you'll get a book template and that book template will help you write and finish your book really easily. If you get any feedback from the people that are the outsource, perhaps the freelancers you've used, you go back into your original manuscript, you update it, make sure everything is all done. Um, and then the next step would be to get someone to help you with the formatting. Um, it's always a good idea if you're if you've got the time and the patience to try formatting it yourself at least once or twice so you get a better appreciation of what's involved and then when you go and hire a freelancer you'll know more of what to ask but typically when you go to a freelancer they're going to ask you a few questions and I put together a book brief for them to help them with this information and make sure that it is delivered to me in the right format that I want. So the book brief will include things like do you want this to be a paperback print or do you want this to be a Kindle version and if it's paperback what size paperback do you want? Amazon has about 20 different sizes. If your book is very small and it's maybe only got 20, 30,000 words, you want to go for the smaller size, unless there are a lot of images, then you might go for a larger one. Um, if your book is is quite heavy, you have anything from 100,000 pages up to, uh, sorry, 100,000 words up to 200,000 words, you might go for a slightly bigger one. Also remember that whatever your book that you choose, um, how is it going to feel to your customer? So this is a random book that I have on my desk. And this book is a 9 by 11 
This book is really popular. It's probably best close to 150,000 words. It would have taken them best part of maybe six months to write this book. There's a lot of content in there. But the books that we're talking about in this course are all short books and should only take you no more than a couple of days to write. So maybe 10 to 20,000 words. Um, you don't have to publish in paperback. You can actually publish it simply in a, a Kindle version if that suits you. Or if you do want to do it, you can also publish it through your Thrive Cart to your website and make a sale. Um, just behind me, I've got a couple of short books that I've written for Airbnb. And these short books are really only 30 pages. I have had them professionally printed at a printer. And as you can see, they look really nice. For the events that I was hosting as an ambassador, I was giving these books out and they were really popular. But now if I was going to do it again, I'd probably only just do it in a Kindle version. I wouldn't go to the effort of printing it, but it's totally up to you. So you need to give your freelancer the book brief of exactly what you want. Um, when you send that to them, there are no more changes to your manuscript. If you find an error, once it has been prepared and typeset, then you, it is likely that they will charge you a fee to do a revision. Um, you should allow maybe about a week for the editing and the proofreading to be completed and then making any last minute changes and then for the formatting, depending on the length of the book, up to a week as well. Um, I have a small video here on editing your book. I'll put that in the next video of this series, uh, pre-production. This is where we talk about the steps and managing your project from start to finish. As I mentioned before, there's proofreading, editing, reviewing, the feedback you get and incorporating that feedback in the course, you'll get access to all this information. It's really just a lot of the time, it's not necessarily about being technically savvy or being good with computers, but it's more being really organized, like getting the right people involved in your book at the right time. So say, for example, you're renovating a house and you needed to renovate a bathroom. You wouldn't install a new toilet before you did the flooring or before you did the plumbing. Everything gets done in a certain order. And that's the same with a book. You would need to make sure you get things completed in the right order so that everything could move along smoothly. Um, schedule of activities and tasks. I'll put this in the YouTube description so you can take a look at it the book publishing team. Now there's a, a variety of different people that you can hire to help you with publishing your book. Um, each of these titles are slightly different titles as in job titles because they have different skill sets and some are more complicated and complex and others are not so difficult to do. Um, so you have a proofreader. A proofreader is someone that typically reads the work before it goes to print. Um, you will likely do two proofreading events, one at the very beginning when you finish writing a book just to make sure everything makes sense. And then after it comes back from the editors and it's all cleaned up, you'll do another final proofread before it goes to print. Um, the person that is very good at this will often be working um, in some sort of publishing area or have experience working in newspapers, magazines, publishing companies. They may specialize in certain niches and topics. So if that's important to you, if your area is very specific, say for example, you're writing a book in the medical field, you'd want to find someone with proofreading experience in the medical field so they can pick up any errors. A proofreader does not edit your work and does not substitute words. A proofreader is simply ensuring that the content makes sense. Um, the next one is an editor. These we refer to them in the industry as book editors. They'll review your content. They'll um, be the person that will make changes and edits to your book. Now the changes they make, they're not improving the storyline. They're simply correcting the grammar and making um, corrections in that way. A copy editor goes one step further. And if you have the budget, invest in a copy editor. So it's the editor plus someone who fixes your copy. So if you are really happy with the manuscript you've created and you don't want your the voice and the sound and the way you come across to change in your book, just hire an editor. If you're not confident with your writing abilities and if you're worried or concerned that your writing is maybe not up to scratch, you need to get a copy editor. 
they will go through and make corrections to your spelling, grammar and structure, but they will also improve your book, improve the paragraphs, and they will go to such an extent that they can actually help you with a lot of feedback and provide a lot of advice and basically help you rewrite your book. Um, a copy editor is at least twice as expensive as a normal editor because it's two jobs, it's editing and rewriting. Um, and then you have a book reviewer. This is an independent person who will come in and give you feedback on your book and they'll make sure that the, the story and the message is clear. It's easy to get caught up in the book as the author and you, uh, your head's inside it. It's really hard to be objective. But the great thing is with a book reviewer, they don't have any, any skin in the game. So they're going to be really direct and hopefully give you that feedback to say, look, Chapter one makes sense. I have no idea what you're talking about. Chapter two, it doesn't really connect. Chapter one, catch chapter two, or part one, part two. Part three makes sense. Part four and the rest of it makes sense. But this is this bit in the middle is not figure. I can't figure it out. I don't quite know what you're getting at. And it's really important to get that feedback because you want that from someone before you go to publish and before you sell your book. It's really important. Um, outsourcing tasks. I highly recommend you outsource as much as possible because when you're outsourcing, you can focus your time and efforts on areas that you do really well in. Um, outsourcing is not expensive. Um, you just need to make sure that you're choosing people that are that you feel good about, that when you connect with them, that there's definitely a genuine uh energy there that you feel that they are the right person. If they don't feel like the right person, just move on to somebody else. Um, and a lot of the time when you're publishing your own books, you will develop a, a circle of contacts that you like and that you'll keep going back to them. So I have in my own personal black book, I have a list of two to three editors that I work with very closely. They always do an exceptional job. One editor um, in particular is good for a very specific genre and the other editor, she's excellent at other topics and other areas and she writes more in American English. The first one is in UK English and I'm Australia. We use UK English in our content. Um, so that's that. Now, if you're wondering how much it would cost you to publish a book, down in the comments, I'm going to leave a link for you to author hero slash cost to publish a book. There's an article there. And I'm, this, this article goes into detail around what you can expect to spend when you're publishing a book. Everything from the book cover, the editing, the proofreading, the reviewing, um, getting it printed, getting it shipped, all those costs, everything that, and, you know, publishing it, launching, marketing, all those bits and pieces. There's a really good article here. Um, so do take a look. The pricing there was, is accurate late 2022, early 2023. Um, and I'll update that as I go month by month if that's needed. Okay. I hope you found this helpful. Head over to the next video where we will go into some more information around pre-production. Have a great day.